Hi everyone, welcome back to Faith and Flower. This is Robin, and in today's video, I am going to be preparing week 23 from the Cook Once, Eat All Week cookbook by Cassie Joy Garcia. This video is in no way sponsored. I'm just a huge fan of this cookbook and this batch cooking method. It has really helped me out in the kitchen, and so that's why I wanna share it with you. This is the fifth week that I have shown you. I've gotten such a great response, so much good feedback from you guys, and you have requested more. So this week is one that has already been proven to be a hit by my family. So I'm recording it this time and showing you how I did it. Basically, this cookbook shows you a method of batch cooking a protein, a vegetable, and a starch. You prepare that at the beginning of the week so that you can assemble three fresh and diverse meals to have throughout the week. And so there are 26 weeks in all with bonus meals so that you can prepare up to five meals a week and extra recipes. The added bonus, especially for our family, is that all of these recipes are gluten-free. But don't let that deter you because she uses only basic, simple ingredients. You won't need anything that you've never heard of or that would be hard to find. This cookbook also supports other dietary approaches such as paleo, grain-free, low-carb, and more. If you've never tried it before, batch cooking may seem intimidating, but this book takes all of the guesswork out. It gives you a really great ingredient list to make your shopping easy, and it gives you step-by-step -step instructions for prep day. She does a phenomenal job of ordering the steps so that you maximize your time in the kitchen and get it done fast. The base ingredients for week 23 are ground pork, cabbage, and red potatoes. And the recipes you're going to prepare are chorizo and potato tacos with cilantro lime coleslaw, egg roll in a bowl, which is basically a deconstructed egg roll and one of my family's very favorites, and Swedish meatballs over mashed potatoes. This week you will need five pounds of ground pork, three pounds of potatoes, and two heads of cabbage, one green and one red. Some of the additional ingredients for the week are corn tortillas and cotilla cheese, which is a Mexican style cheese that is so yummy, and a few other fresh ingredients. And I find it really easy just to plug all of the ingredients that I need for the week into an online order. To get started, I'm going to bake a third of the potatoes, so that's one pound, and that's why I'm weighing them out. I actually realized that I washed five pounds of potatoes, so I'm not gonna be using all of these, just three pounds for all of these recipes. Rub the potatoes with some olive oil and then bake them in the oven at 375 degrees for about 60 to 75 minutes or until the potatoes are easily pierced with a fork. The rest of the potatoes are going to be used to make the mashed potatoes. So start off by cutting them into about one inch cubes and then place the potatoes in a large pot, cover with water and bring to a boil over high heat. Then reduce the heat and simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the potatoes are easily pierced with a fork. Next, you are going to brown some of the pork. So place a large skillet over medium heat and put three and a half pounds of the ground pork in the pan along with a teaspoon of coarse sea salt. And you're gonna wanna cook this, crumbling the meat as it cooks until slightly browned and fully cooked through, which takes about eight to 10 minutes. I know that some of you are wondering what is this tool that I am using and it is so great for breaking up any kind of ground meat. I have it in my Amazon store in case you're interested, so look for that link down in the description box. With the remaining one and a half pounds, you're going to make the meatballs. To the ground pork, you're going to add dried parsley, rub sage, coarse sea salt, black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, ground cinnamon, ground allspice, and some ground cloves. Work the seasonings into the meat with your hands until the mixture has an even consistency. On a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper, I measure out scoopfuls of the mixture with a small scoop. It's probably about two tablespoon size scoop, I'm guessing. And then once I have all the little portions out, I roll them into the meatballs. The instructions say to bake the potatoes at 375 and the meatballs at 400. I just did both side by side at 400 and it turned out fine. You want to cook the meatballs for about 18 minutes or until they're slightly browned. Mm -hmm. 
When the potatoes were ready, I drained them in a colander and then I just returned them back to the same pan that I boiled them in. Add butter, cream, salt, pepper, and garlic powder, and then using a potato masher, mash until the ingredients are well incorporated and the potatoes are mashed to your desired consistency. If you are in the market for a potato masher, I highly recommend this one. I had to replace an old one not long ago and I love this one because sometimes you just need two hands and this one works great. Once again, you can find it in my Amazon store. The link for that is in the description box and the cookbook is in there too. When the ground pork was done, I just turned off the heat and set it aside to cool for a little bit. Later, I'll show you how I divided it into containers to store. The next step in prep day is to make the cilantro lime dressing. And so you're going to combine a half a cup of avocado oil or mayonnaise. And this time I used avocado oil, but I have to say when I used mayonnaise the last time, I liked it a little bit better. You add a third a cup of fresh cilantro leaves along with the stems, two tablespoons of full fat coconut milk, two tablespoons of fresh lime juice, and a tablespoon of sliced green onions to your blender and whirl it together. That's all there is to it. And you're just going to store it in the refrigerator to use later in the week. Once the potatoes and the meatballs were done, I set them aside to let them cool for a little bit. And later in the video, after I show you all of the prep, I'll show you how I stored everything. To prepare the cabbages, you're going to cut each in half. And so with one half of the cabbages, you're going to coarsely chop, and the other half you're going to use a food processor or a grater to grate it. In the instructions, it says to place the chopped cabbage in a container labeled stir fry and the shredded cabbage in a container labeled tacos and store in the refrigerator for use later in the week. So I am going to use the chopped cabbage in the egg roll in a bowl recipe for dinner tonight. So I'm not going to put those away and store them. I'm going to keep them out. And as soon as I finish prep, I'm going to start dinner for tonight. Also in the instructions for prep day, she says to dice a small yellow onion, then mince four cloves of garlic. Place them in the same container and store them in the refrigerator for use later in the week. When I did that last time, my refrigerator had an overpowering odor of onion and garlic, no matter what container I put them in. So I just decided that I'm going to prep the onions and the garlic on the day that I need them for the recipe. The same goes for the ginger, but if you want to prepare it ahead of time, you just need to grate a one inch piece of ginger until you have enough to equal a teaspoon, and you can store that in the refrigerator as well. For the carrots and the green onions, you just need to peel and shred four medium-sized carrots or enough to equal one cup. Then thinly slice five green onions or enough to equal a half a cup. You can place the carrots and the green onions in the same container and store in the refrigerator for later in the week. I'm using these in the egg roll and a bowl recipe tonight, so I'm gonna be using them right away. Here I'm prepping the onion and the garlic that I mentioned earlier. And once you have all of those things finished, prep day is done. So here's how I stored everything for the tacos and the meatballs that I'm gonna make later in the week. I cannot tell you how satisfying it is when you package up everything and arrange it in your refrigerator and know that you have got three meals all set for the week ahead. The decision about what to make for dinner is already made <laughs> and you only need about 20 minutes on the night you want to prepare it to prep everything and cook it. It's so easy and this was another week that my family really loved and I can't wait to show you the recipes.
First up is egg roll in a bowl. We went ahead and had this on the same night of prep day. This one was so good and it's probably the easiest to put together. The prep time is only five minutes and the cook time 10 minutes. So 15 total and you've got dinner on the table. Heat the oil in a large skillet or wok over medium high heat. Once it's hot, you can add the onions and the garlic and saute for two to three minutes until the onion is translucent. Next, stir in the ginger. And I am a huge fan of these sort of pre-measured frozen cubes of ginger. I just find them super convenient to have them on hand in my freezer. They're a little bit more expensive. You definitely pay for the convenience. <laughs> so if you want to grate fresh ginger, that is great too. Then add the pork, coconut aminos, vinegar, sesame oil, red pepper flakes, and salt. Stir until combined and cook for about two minutes or until the sauce begins to bubble. Coconut aminos is a soy sauce substitute, and this is widely available. I can find it in all of my local grocery stores. It's a little bit less salt, so if you're looking for low sodium, it's great. It's gluten-free and of course, soy-free. But if you prefer to put in soy sauce, you can do that here as well. The final step is to add the cabbage, carrots, and green onions to the pan. Just toss to coat them in the sauce and cook for three to four minutes. The instructions call for two small heads of cabbage and mine were definitely on the medium to large side. So I had extra cabbage and extra carrots after grating them and my wok could just barely contain it all. <laughs> So you can adjust accordingly and I actually saved the cabbage and the carrots that I had left over and made some coleslaw for later in the week so I was really happy to have that pre-prepared as well. All three of the recipes I'm showing you today were hits at our house but this one is one that they have asked for repeatedly since I made it so I'm going to say that this one is the winner for the week. If your family loves Asian food, they're going to love this and you're gonna be so impressed that you made this at home. Chorizo and potato tacos with cilantro lime slaw. This recipe I knew was going to be a hit with my family. We love Mexican, Tex-Mex, anything like that. These taste like really good authentic street tacos. In addition to the things you made for this recipe on prep day, you'll need the cotilla cheese and corn tortillas. I started off with mixing up the coleslaw because I like our coleslaw to be a little bit marinated, so this would give it time to do that while I'm prepping the other ingredients. To make the slaw, all you have to do is toss the shredded cabbage with the cilantro lime dressing and then season to taste with salt. After I mix it together, I felt like it needed a little something else. Like I said before, when I made this dressing the last time, I used mayonnaise, and so I would probably do that again. It was just lacking a little something, <laughs> so I wound up adding just another couple splashes of apple cider vinegar, along with a little bit of mayonnaise, and then it was just right. To make the filling, heat the oil in a large skillet over medium high heat, and once that's hot, add the potatoes. Fry the potatoes for about three to four minutes, and then flip and cook for an additional three minutes until browned and crispy. Remove the potatoes from the pan and set aside. Add the pork to the pan along with the vinegar and all of the spices. 
the spices that you are adding, the sea salt, chili powder, paprika, ground cumin, oregano leaves, and black pepper give the filling so much flavor. Stirring occasionally for four to five minutes until the pork is crispy. The instructions call for you to warm up the tortillas in a small skillet. I prefer to do it this way over an open flame. So if you have a gas stove, I highly recommend this. I learned this from the Pioneer Woman and it makes the tacos so yummy. Once the taco starts to get a tiny bit charred, you flip it over and char the other side. This really takes corn tortillas to the next level. It gives them a great texture and such a depth of flavor. While keeping a careful eye on the warming tortillas and the filling, I chopped up the cilantro and cut up a lime. Return the potatoes to the pan and stir them into the pork, then remove the pan from the heat. Assemble the tacos, fill each warm tortilla with the chorizo potato filling, top with a slaw, and then garnish with the cilantro and cheese, and serve with lime wedges. If your family loves taco night, this is a great way to level up your game. And I think this would be really fun to share with friends as well. Swedish meatballs over mashed potatoes. The prep time for this one is five minutes and the cook time 15. So in 20 minutes, you've got dinner all ready. And this one is elegant enough to serve for guests. My family loves meatballs and the pork in the meatballs was a different sort of change for us. We really liked it. And all of the flavors from the spices that you add are just really yummy. Melt the butter in a large skillet over medium heat. Once it's melted, sprinkle in the flour and whisk until smooth. I use a gluten-free flour blend. You don't need to if you don't need to be gluten-free. You could use all-purpose and it would turn out just the same. Slowly pour in the chicken broth, whisking or stirring constantly to smooth out any lumps. Bring the mixture to a low boil and then reduce the heat to medium low and whisk in the cream, salt, and pepper. Add the meatballs to the pan and stir to coat and then cover and cook for another five minutes until heated through. Before serving, taste the sauce for seasoning and add more salt if desired. While the meatballs were simmering, I chopped up the fresh parsley. And because she doesn't suggest a vegetable to go along with this, I just cut up some broccoli into small florets and steam them in the microwave. I didn't add any additional seasoning to the broccoli because the sauce from the meatballs gives it all the flavor it needs. Then I warmed up the potatoes in the microwave for about three minutes, stirring halfway through. Serve the meatballs and sauce over the mashed potatoes and garnish with the parsley. And like I said, the sauce is also great with the broccoli, so I thought that was a really great accompaniment to this meal. I hope that you will give this one a try along with the other two. And if you enjoy this sort of video, please let me know by giving me a thumbs up. I really enjoy doing these for you guys. I hope that it helps you out in really putting this cookbook to use. It's a great way to get ahead of the game and 
get some dinners prepared so that you can get dinner on the table quickly on those busy weeknights. Thank you so much for spending your time with me here today. If you haven't already done so, I want to invite you to subscribe. Subscribing is easy and absolutely free. All you have to do is click on my picture. Don't leave without stopping by the comment section and saying hello. I love to hear from you guys there. I look forward to talking with you and I will see you in the next video. Until then, have a wonderful week.